<laughs> What's up, you two? Team plays for days. Of course. I'm back. Finally, I'm gonna give you all my deck profile. Um, I know it's not gonna be as relevant or mean, meaningful because I did not get top eight. Um, however, I did get 11th place. Um, uh, we'll, we'll go over like my matchups and stuff like that. I just I feel like I need to give you guys a little insight of what I, how I've been progressing with this deck and what I decided to go with. And there's no deck profiles for Guardians, so we gotta make one for everybody. And in all fairness, a lot will be happening and changing. Um, I had a good talk with uh, our, new, our new boy, Christian uh, Nieves of New York. Uh, Chris Snow, shout so, out. So, yeah, Chris Snow, shout out. Shout out to your peeps. Um, so, we had, we had some good talks about Guardians. But we're gonna go in and I'm gonna show you guys a little look into my Guardian world. Guardian world. So, first off, we start four of the true buddy. Um, he is the ultimate buddy. This is the card that truly, if you don't play four of it, you need to play four of it. This what is this name? This is. Perpetual Envoy Elixir. Oh, he had a hard time with that, folks. Because I don't read any of their names. <laughs> okay, I literally only know Carrarian's name. <laughs> so, Elixir is call cost of pay one gauge, put the top card of your deck into its soul. It is soul guard and move, natural. And all cards on your field get plus 2,000 power. It is just way too strong. It's if have, stupid. If you have two or less cards in your drop zone, which more than likely you're going to have two or less cards, everything on your Guardians gets a crit. Okay, that means item, this guy, other monsters, gets a crit. It's too strong at 5-2-3. At five, two, three, his only downside is he has 3k defense. But hey, who cares? We have spells that help this guy. And now that I'm, my mind has been open to better plays, I understand what happens here. This card is way too good, and he should always be the buddy, unless something better comes in. Um, we're going to go straight into my personal tech. Um, I saw a lot of Guardian players playing to, er, the other day, and, but I never saw any of them play this one card. It is my absolute favorite card. Ah! Next to Ultimate Card Burn. This is Inverse, second Omni Demon Lord, Death as Modi. Ah, I love him. At the attack of 50,000, 3 critical, and 10,000 defense with the pay cost of 2 gauge and the effect of whenever he's destroyed, you take lifelink 2 and you call 3 cards from the top of your deck. If they are monsters, they get called to the field. This came in clutch a lot during playtesting. It came in clutch a lot during the tournament because um, being is that your life is 2 or your life is 12. You start out with such a bigger advantage. So if you open this guy, you can just turn into the best plays. Um, game three in my second round, I was up against something that I was playing against before. It was Blade Beast. And I dropped this guy because I knew that Blade Beast cannot get around this unless they have an item and two monsters. Uh, knowing that matchup so well is what helped me in that. Uh, if I didn't know the cards, then I probably would have been in trouble. But this guy right here stops so many issues. Penetrate also helps a lot. Penetrate too strong. Um, this was another tech. I played one card of this guy, Dragon Protector of the Celestial Gate, uh, Luminellium. Uh, call cost, pay two gauge, uh, all items and spells on your field, as long as he's on the field, cannot be destroyed. Uh, 727. Uh, also, whenever he enters the field, you can put up to one Guardian card. One Guardian. Anything. That's a card, people. From your drop zone into your hand. His only downside is that he has life lifelink, too. Who and cares? It's Guardians. that's not even a downside. You start off with 12 life. You start off with 12 life. Fuck that. He has move and double attack, people. This card <laughs> can be so good. I just want to make him good, and I'm going to keep him in here. I, I can't take him out for the life of me. He is just really good. Um, this is another one of. It is the um, Infititude Envoy uh, Armit Armita Armita Arm. It's too much. You tried. You tried. Armitai. That's enough. Whatever. You tried. These pay a gauge. Um, 
when he's called, you put the top three cards of your deck into the drop zone, and you choose a guardian card from amongst them, a dragon arms or a guardian card from amongst them. In this deck, it's going to be a, a and guardian. Then if there's a monster in the soul, or and then you add it to your hand, and then if there's a monster on your field with the soul, <laughs> AKA this guy, uh, then he gets an extra crit. So, so it's a possible three crit monster with that on the board. <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> it's so stupid. And like he's gonna come out. Honestly, he is. Um, the only time I thought that he would be really good is in the play of hit him, mill the three with the uh, get the card back. With the effect of gate, I could put the three back because of the gauge they cost in order to gain the life, or with the draw card. And a lot of times he came in really late. I mean, I'm only playing one of them. I wasn't expecting him to do great things. The four attack is the main thing I was looking at. But his effect wasn't so helpful. So he, he is most definitely coming out. I only played one of the Melody Envoy Sword Fruit Dragon because I don't like him at all. Um, I really shouldn't have been playing him at all because he was not actually in the original build. Um, I put one in just in case I didn't see gate enough, which obviously I saw gate way too much. I'm I sure. mean, it's not like it's way too much because it's the best card in the deck. But being is that he just comes out and he's a 3-2-1 and he doesn't cost anything. That was the only reason I actually put him in there was because it was a free cost and that if I didn't want to play gauge and I had enough gauge to play uh, my size 2 guy. That was that was really the only mindset behind this card. It wasn't worth it, and he doesn't need to be in the deck. Oh, sad times. Yeah. We're he will be my, missed. We're on to my buddy. Um, Sparkling Envoy Carrarian. Wait a minute, there's only three. There's only three. When did you do that? There's only been three. You don't have to put four of your buddy in the deck? What? So... Honestly, he's probably going to get dropped to two. He's not going to be the buddy anymore. Um, Carrarian works in clutch moments because if you need to get over a problem, he boosts himself up to a 6,000. Um, so you pay a gauge, and when he enters, you get the gate. You call the, you get the gate to your hand. You know, he's the second searcher, but he's a 3 2 1. And if you have two or less in the drop zone, he gets an extra 3,000 power. So, hello problem cards. And most cards only have 6,000 defense, and he gets over all of them. On top of that, I'm just going to leave this guy on the field because he, he makes just everything happen. He becomes an 8,000 attacker, so he can even hit bigger problems if he needs to. And he has three crit with him on the field if your play is coming together. It's he's really good. He also looks the best, honestly. I like his art a lot because he looks like an angel power ranger. And, and you know that that's to me that's the true meaning of a guardian. <laughs> um, so he'll probably get cut to two, but Carreri, don't don't doubt him. Here's a guy that I see a lot of people playing at four. We're gonna, we're gonna put him right here. A lot, uh, I see a lot of people playing this guy at four. It's um, Swoop Envoy Angulus. 3 2 1, no call cost. Comes out. Um, Blessing Pierce is the name of his effect because it's a once per turn effect. Um, when he enters the field, if you have a gate or, or, or. no cards in the drop zone, it's too you good. You don't have to have either or. You don't have to have both. You have to. You, well, it is either or, but you don't have to have both. He just comes out. On turn one, you can just play him, get the extra card that you just played, swing for two. Like, guys, come on. I only play three of them because, yeah, I like to draw, but I don't need to see him that often. The deck recycles, you're going to see him anyway. I'm going to keep him at three. I cannot stand him at four. I cannot stand him at less. Three is an okay number for him. My favorite little cheerleader lady. <laughs> the Blitz Envoy Shiny Bell. So, <laughs> and no, so pretty. no call cost. 2 1 2. Um, counteract. Uh, you can put her and a card from the drop zone to the bottom of the deck. Gauge one. So, theoretically, you just put her in the middle, swing. If you have the item, you can pay the gauge, swing with the item. So, you can get the, the Gal Mikado Evolution Tactic Bull crap. 
that she did in the show. And you can do it because she kind of works like a boomerang and gets you engaged. Advanced so, scout formation. Fun. Yeah. Um, you know, only being 2 1 2, she doesn't need to be a 3 because she can't hit big problems. She only turns into a 4 with uh, a Lick Swan Field. So she'll probably go down to 2. We'll see what we do in the works. I have a lot to think about when I get to hit the lab again. Um, really good card, really solid. Uh, like I said, I can't, uh, I don't think I can keep her at three. This is the problem solver of the deck. Huh? Yeah. So the problem solver. The unsullied executor dragon, Judge Chupacabra. Judge <laughs> Chupacabra. <laughs> <laughs> We're not even gonna. I'm try. pretty sure that's not what that is. Chupacabra. <laughs> Char ch I don't. Nope. I'm done. Chupacabra. We're, yep. Chupacabra. That works. <laughs> seven two seven double attack. Pay two gauge has act ability that you can activate only once per turn, but you can do it every turn. You return two cards from the bottom of your deck, or two cards from your drops onto the bottom of your deck. Wait a minute. You pay two gauge though, right? You pay two gauge. Fuck so this you card. get the card. Pay two gauge. Get the two cards from your drop zone. Put them to the bottom of your deck. Blow up a card. A card. Spells. Idols. Monsters. Impacts. He is the judge, Chupacabra. And he is here to make your life living hell. It is. Um, I use him sometimes to get rid of soul so that I can get over a monster if I have to double attack over him. Uh, I can get rid of fields. Like, you know, if I'm playing executioners or guardians, pop the item, pop the gate. You know, pop both monsters with the attacks and just keep swinging. He comes in a lot of clutch moments, uh, and he he will most definitely probably stay at two uh, if I don't move him up to three. Um, but that's 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 all in the works. You know, I mean, more than likely he's going to stay at two though. Just just too good, solid. This card right here, um, Deity Dragon. Uh, Envoy Muriel. Muriel! Um, you pay a gauge, and if you have three or less cards in your drop zone, it gets double attack. It gets double attack. It's already got 4k attack, so it can get rid of all those. But wait, no, ones. it has six? It's if you have this. So it already gets rid of your little problem monsters. With this, it gets rid of bigger problem monsters. Um, whenever if uh, whenever it attacks and it destroys a monster, you gain a life like you don't need anymore. Um, you don't. Four one three. She becomes a six two three. Um, size one that has double attack and honestly, I could see her at three. I could. Um, she's really clutch. She comes in a lot of better plays and she makes the deck more aggro and more viable. Um. She, she really, really helped a lot. This little lady next in line is probably the best looker of the deck, in all honesty. It is Justice Enjoy, er, Envoy Angel Bitch. I wasn't ready. <laughs> so, 2-2-1, two, two, uh, she has a move. When, uh, she has the effect of when a super heroine or a guardian enters the field while she's on the field, you remove the soul of a card. Secret Sword, buy. Jaeger, buy. Jack, buy. Just remove soul of card. If you have her, and then you want to go another size one, and another size one, that's two soul that goes away from anything you want to do. Clutch. When she attacks, if you have five or less in the drop zone, you gain a life, like you need more. <laughs> she just has to attack. <laughs> wow. Um, size one. She'll stay at two. Uh, the rest are in the side. Uh, it's just you—you you can't play too much of her uh, because you don't know what you're gonna run into. She's not big, so she can't hit these big attack problems. Yeah, like, she dies quickly. She only goes into a four. The best thing about her is that she has move. It's not that she gains a life; it's that she has move, so she can come in clutch situations. Then that's it for the monsters. So we go four into one of the best items in the game. Mm, questionable. I said one of the best. One that means best. it could be in like top 10, top 20, you that know, works. top 100, something. Top 1,000. Something. I don't even think we have that many cards. Oh, but yeah. We have like two grand. Okay. <laughs> so, Sky Pillar Armor, Demormitan. Oh, he tried it. Yep, yep. We're going to go Demormitan because it's a cool Pokemon. 
Darmanitan. Uh, Darmanitan. Is that his name? Darmanitan. Darmanitan. There we okay. go. Four one six one. <laughs> um. So it's activated. If you have no cards in the drop zone, it gets an extra crit. So it's a four two six three. <laughs> Got that card. So crazy. Uh, this this is just the deck right here. Here's the that deck. one card is the deck. Um, so act. You may take a card from your drop zone, put it on the bottom of your deck. Gauge. Free. Yeah, it's once per turn. Who cares? You get the extra gauge. It's free. You pay the card for free, guys. Um, it's it's such a good card. Its artwork is even better. Okay. Uh, Stupid violin, you don't play it. You play <laughs> your your Gundam arm because your your hand of yours is burning red. Okay, this is what we do. Here. Well, we are not playing battle poets. Easy. I now. don't care. <laughs> Going on to the spells now because that's it for the items. I plead two of encouragement of the white veil. Well, you pay. The call cost is you take a card from the bottom of your to your drop zone, put it on the bottom of your deck. Uh, you choose one of the two following effects. You can give your item a crit plus one or and penetrate, or you choose a guardian and give it plus three plus three counter attack. This card could have been better, or you don't need it. So, oh, just still okay. It's, it's just I had high hopes for the card. I really wanted it to be good. It's bad. Another card I had high hopes for: Light of Guidance. Uh, I was shown that this card was actually way worse than I thought it was. Um, I fought on whether or not it should be in the deck. I fought on whether or not I should play more than two. I fought on just just it. It's. I wanted to play it because one, it was a guardian card. I also wanted to play it two because it reduces damage to zero. So penetrate doesn't happen. Life link doesn't happen. Stuff like that. Um, but I was enlightened on the fact that you should never discard cards playing Guardian. This is better than a discard. Yeah, discard. Um, you know, you... Heroes. It's call cost is you discard a card from your, from your hand. Uh, you gauge a card, which is okay, and then you reduce damage to zero. If you didn't have to discard a card, if the cost was put a card from the bottom of your drop zone to your from the from the drop zone to the bottom of your deck, this card would be phenomenal. That card would be, be broken. Amazing. Uh, but because of you discarding, this card is awful. So awesome. Man, just throwing cards. Favorite impact. Glee glee. Big wave. With the star and the arrows. With and is that double, an exclamation point? No, it's not. Okay, no, just arrows double, and stuff. Once you got double arrows and the star. This card, I didn't get to use it all, honestly. Actually, I tried to use it once and I didn't get burn nova I got some kind of star dragon world card that if you have a jack, your life goes to one. Um, pretty it's funny. Weird. Because I was expecting Burn Nova because it was against one of our, the guys that I play at Locals normally. And I know he put Burn Nova in, so when he's like, life hit zero, I was like, oh, Burn Nova, now I'm done for it. No, it was the Jack card, and I was a little safer. Jack Knife Linker, there we go. Yep, Jack, yeah. Um, so, you can only cast this card if your opponent has no card in the center, if you have no cards in the drop zone, and if they're at three life or less. Um, you pay two life, not gauge, two life. You have too much of it. You can always play. Yeah, you're at 19 by the time you activate it. damage to your opponent. Um, damage dealt by it cannot be reduced. Three a lot of A lot of everyone will tell you not to run Gleegly Big Wave. I'm telling you, run Gleegly Big Wave. I guess it's good. This card I need to run more of. Sky Dragon Divinity. Um, Dragon World Draw Power. Super good card. You... Um, you pay a gauge of life, and you can only play it if you have 10 cards or less in your drop zone. You can't play it if you have a lot. So it can't get you out of situations like gate can. You put three cards from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck, and you draw two. Super solid card. Yeah, I need to run four. I don't know why I took it down to two. Um, I also battled this card a lot, because I didn't think I needed the draw power. Honestly, you need the draw power. You always need you, draw power. You need the draw power. This card, um, 
Dragon Sky Regression. I hate that I took this down to three now. I put one on the side. Um, I needed it to be at four because I needed to see this a lot more for aggro decks that were easily taking me down from 12. Um, and it's you can only play this if you have a guardian on the field. You bounce a size two or less monster. If you have zero cards in your drop zone, you gain a life because you need more. It's free call cost, and it's just a free, really good magical goodbye that's better. In Guardians. In Guardians. Uh, next on, we're to the shield of the deck, Wait. Heaven Shield. Are those all foils? No, I only have one. Why does I'm, this look foil? I'm oh, a scrub. Okay. I only um, have like one foil of each card. It happens. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't have a lot of money to spend. People don't like to trade with me, even though I have like twenty something refs. Um, so you can only play this card if you don't have an opponent or if you don't have a monster. <laughs> He's stupid. In your center, and you have to have a guardian on the field. Uh, you nullify the attack and gain a life. If you have no cards in your drop zone, this card itself cannot be nullified. So it's Lord's Dragon Shield and Green Dragon Shield in the same card. Yes. Wow. Just fantastic. I mean, we need the shield. I mean, we have we have two because here's the second one. The shield of the justice will never shield. One foil. <laughs> one foil. One foil. <laughs> he needs more. <laughs> please. Help him out. Trade with him, please. You can cast this only on your opponent's turn. Nullify it. Nullify the attack if it's not a link attack. Solid all, of your, shield clone. all of your guys are small. They are. So they're only going to use a link or like a normal attack. Unless you have like Judge or Judge. Esmodi on field. But <laughs> like it stops so much. It keeps your plays aggro. It keeps your attacks going good. If you have a gate, uh, you know, you just you just get a lot of done stuff. You, you get stuff done for free. And now we're on to the best card in the deck. This oh is the last God. card. This is the gate pardon forgiven. So strong. Why Bushy Road? free. Um, it has two act abilities. Well, the first act ability is the best one, I think it is. I can't remember the order that they actually go in. Yeah. So the first one is you put the three cards from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck, gain a life. Because you need more. You always need life. Your second one, and you can activate both of these in one turn. It doesn't it doesn't limit you. So you can take a card from your hand. If you have zero cards in the drop zone, no monsters on the field. Take a card from your hand, put it to the bottom of your deck. Search your deck for any monster you want. Play it. Hey, it's call cost. So you summon a monster for free, basically, with this card. Yeah. This is so nuts. In top decking situations, I found one combo that I will reveal. People probably know it. The ugliest combo in the game. So if if your opponent does not have item destruction, spell destruction, anything like that, you can have the gate, this, and this. Keep it on so, the map. So you can have any card in hand, pay it, as long as you have one card in drop. Activate, boom, you have two. Activate the gate, you put the card that you charge and draw to the bottom, boom. You summon the judge, you pay the call cost, you put the call cost back, boom. If judge gets destroyed after you've already blown up something and attacked twice, he goes there. So next turn, you draw, charge, draw, you have a card in hand now. Activate put it back in the bottom, activate, put back on there, there's Judge again, activate, boom, pop, pop. It's an infinite combo if they don't have destruction. And it is so easy to get off, it's so easy to maneuver, and it's you, stupid. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's really fun, it's really fast, it's really friendly, except for to your opponent. That's right. Uh, my matchups, because that was it for the deck. Um, round one, I played a guy from our world, <laughs> Michael Liu, um, playing Legend World it's not getting delivered, Fairies. Um, I played round two, Blade Beast, another guy from uh, Zeej Gaming. I didn't catch any of their names. Uh, I only know the two people from Locals that I remember. Um, but he was he was really good. Uh, I liked to see more people play Blade Beast because I tried to make Blade Beast really, really unstoppable. They just didn't have enough. It was really hard because they don't they don't have enough support. Um, round three, I played another guy from our locals, Brad. Uh, he actually drove up with us. He's playing Star Dragon World with Jack. Um, it, 
It was harder to get around Jack because of the move and the fact that Gazer and Bonds and stuff like that, they all do things that, you know, I have to work around and actually had to play. And, you know, it was it was a fun game. Um, Raging Spirits was my fourth round, which was literally probably second to my toughest matchup. Uh, my last three rounds were the hardest things hey, I've ever played in my life. Hey! Um, <laughs> Raging Spirits. Uh, I don't remember who you were, but if you remember that you played me uh, in round four, you played Guardians. That game was insane. And it was fun, and I want to do it again. Uh, round five was Zodiac. This was my first loss, uh, and it wasn't by losing, it was by double loss. Bushy Road, why did you do that? We went to time. And I didn't know it was the game that if he lost, he would have been knocked out. Basically the pair down. Yeah, so I got the, I got the pair down. And unfortunately, I didn't know or I would have asked him if he would have just given me the win. Uh, we could have been cool. We are still cool. Um, he's buddies with Christian Nieves. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have any hard feelings towards him. Good guy, great match. Uh, I would also love to do that again. Zodiac. Um, last... Last game, round six, was uh, Skull Warriors, and I had never played Skull Warriors. You're fine, brother. <laughs> I never played Skull Warriors that really fast. It was really stupid. It was awful. It was actually terrible <laughs> for me to get around. And game one, it caught me off guard because I didn't know what to do. It was um, a really good game is what he's saying. And so I lost game one. I sided out to make it more rush, and all I did was rush the field with size ones and blow up all of his, and then just keep attacking faster than he could. That was my mentality, and that's what won me the games. Um, it was it was just, I had to adapt against the play style that I've never seen before. Um, I hope to get, see you all again. You know, Next year, uh, I will most definitely make more stops. Uh, you won't see me stop playing Guardian. Unless, like, you know, I come into something that, like, I kind of want to give a try. But this is going to be my baby for a little bit. Um, so that is me, Opie, and that is my deck profile. Came in 11th place again, like I said. Um, so really cool. Uh, that one game would have got me into the top eight. But it's okay. It's all good. We, we live, we learn, we try. And um, team place for days. We're out. Out.